Hi kids! Welcome to our online service that has been produced specially for you. Hey kids! We are so glad to meet you all again. Thank you for joining us online. Why don't you go ahead and type your name and tell us where you're watching us from? And if it is your first time tuning into the kids online service, please don't forget to mention that in the live chat below. Today, we will be learning about another amazing blessing that we have as children of God. But before I tell you what it is, let me ask you a question. And you can type the answer in the live chat. Are you ready? In the Bible, who is called the Prince of Peace? Let me help you out with a clue. It's found in this Bible verse. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 For a child is born to us, a son is born given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Yes, that's right. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Let's think about that for a second. If Jesus is the Prince of Peace, then peace must be super important to him, right? Absolutely. In fact, God is the God of Peace. There is a name of God that means the Lord is Peace. Do you know what it is? Did someone say Jehovah Shalom? Yes, that's right. I am sure by now all of you would have guessed what the topic of today is. Yes, it is the blessing that the Prince of Peace himself gives us which is found in Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. This is the seven beatitude that Jesus taught us. Children, are you all peacemakers? Do you want to know how to be one and how we can be blessed by God by being a peacemaker? I am really looking forward to learning more. So let's pray together and get started. Let's close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this good Sunday morning. We thank you for protecting us and providing us everything we need, even in this hard situation. Lord, we ask for a heart of peace and we ask for your help to be patient at all times and make peace with everyone. Lord, Help us concentrate in the service and may the service be a great blessing to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Romans 16 verse 20 says that the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. As we raise our praises and worship God, we allow the God of peace to reign and rule over our lives and our God will destroy all the works of Satan. We are set free from any fear, trouble, grief or sin in our life. The higher we lift Jesus' name in praise, the more power and authority we have over the enemy. God has given us the authority to crush Satan. So, let's all praise God together in one voice and lift the name of Jesus, our Prince of Peace. Good morning everyone. Today we are going to sing and celebrate the presence of the Lord. Are you ready? We hope you know this song. Let's sing together. Do sing with us. Amen. I've 
Sure. 
know that our peace is coming from you. We love you, Jesus. Help us to understand the amount of peace that you are giving inside our hearts, Lord. We love you, Jesus. You know, children, during Bible times, people did not have sinks and taps in their homes like the way we do nowadays. They got their waters from outdoors. They would dip buckets or jars into wells and pull up fresh water. Our story today is about a man named Isaac who struggled to find peace with the people living nearby. Children, God blessed Isaac and gave him so many crops, so many animals and servants that Isaac became very rich. But his neighbors, the Philistines, they saw how rich Isaac was and they became jealous of him. And they wished that they were as rich as Isaac was. So they did something mean to him. There was a time when Isaac needed to dig a well so that his family, his helpers and his animals could drink good, fresh water. You know children, digging up a well is a lot of hard work. Now let's make a miniature well. Alright, so imagine Isaac and his workers digging up a well for his people. Dig. Dig, dig, seems very quick, but Isaac's helpers worked very hard to dig a hole and the hole got deeper and deeper and water sprung up and filled up the well. Everyone was so happy except Isaac's neighbors, the Philistines, they shouted that is our well and they started a big argument what do you think isaac should do children about his neighbors saying that the well that he and his people dug was theirs but isaac kept his peace and he did not want to argue about this with his neighbors so isaac left them to have the well and isaac moved to another place and he told his helpers to go and dig another well. So they got out and picked up their shovels and started working hard again. Now let's work hard to dig up another well for Isaac. Dig, dig, dig. Isaac's helpers worked hard again. They worked so hard to dig out another well. Soon water sprung up and filled up the second well. They had found water again. But Isaac's neighbors came once again. And they shouted, that is our well. They were so angry. But Isaac still wanted to have peace with his neighbors. So once again, Isaac moved to another place and he told his helpers, let's go dig another well. Dig, dig, dig. Isaac's helpers had to dig another well. They worked so hard and pretty soon, Water, fresh water sprung up and filled the third well too. But this time, Isaac's neighbors, they did not shout. They did not push. They did not argue. Isaac named the well Rehoboth. He said, now the Lord has found a place for us. We will grow and be successful in this place. One night soon after, the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Don't be afraid. I am with you. I will bless you. I will make your family great. Isaac thanked God for being with him. Then Isaac heard strange voices outside his tent. 
he curiously went to see who had come to visit him. Standing right in front of him was King Abimelech of the Philistines and some of the men from the city of Gerar. Isaac was quite surprised to see them and wondered why they had come. He asked them, Why have you come here? All of you hated me and kicked me out of your city. You forced me to move away. Then, when I dug my wells, you took them away from me and I had to move my family again. What do you want from me now? Then they answered, We have seen the Lord is with you. We see how the Lord has prospered you and made you great. We want to be friends with you again. We want to make an agreement with you that if you won't hurt any of us, we won't hurt any of your family. Isaac was so glad that God helped him to make peace. So children, remember, sometimes it may be easier to fight, but living peaceably is the right way. You see, even though injustice happened twice to Isaac, he was at peace. He did not argue or fight for what was rightfully his. But he was patient and trusted in God to provide a place for him, Rehoboth, and for his people. And God was faithful to Isaac. God blessed Isaac and gave him favor. And what's the best part of this story, children? The very same people who were mean to Isaac recognized that God was in his life and came back to make peace with Isaac. So children, are you ready to learn the memory verse for this week? It's from Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Can you all repeat this now with me loudly? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. Okay children, are you ready for the activity? Have you all been paying attention to today's lesson? Let's check. I will ask you a few questions and I want you to quickly type your answers in the live chat section. Are you ready for your first question? Question 1. What was more important to Isaac? The water from the well or making peace with his neighbours who were being mean to him? Yes, children, that's right. Making peace with his neighbors is the right answer. Even though the Philistines were being mean to Isaac, Isaac did not fight back or be mean to them. He wanted to have peace with them and he chose to dig another well even though it was so much hard work. Isaac was a peacemaker. Children, are you ready for the next question? Question 2. What did the Philistines say to Isaac after a long time of being mean to him? Option A. We know that God is with you. Option B. The wells belong to us. Option C. Go out of our land. Yes, we know that God is with you is the right answer. This is what Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, said in Genesis chapter 26 verse 28. We saw clearly that God was with you. 
very good children now the last one is the fill in the blanks are you ready question 3 complete this verse blessed are the peacemakers for blank Yes, that's right children. It's blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. In the Bible story, we can see that Isaac chose to be a peacemaker and even his enemies clearly saw that God was with Isaac. Very good children. You did so well. Proverbs 25 verse 11 Saying the right thing at the right time is like a golden apple in a silver setting. The words that God gives us through the Bible to speak over our lives and the lives of others have the power to mend broken relationships and calm anxious minds and bring peace where there is none. So let's all stand up and hold our Bibles high up in the air to say our declaration. Say it out loud, bold and strong with me. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word, I believe his word and I live by his word. Christ is my master and to him I am in absolute surrender. I walk into the more glorious covenant with God. I live the more glorious life in the spirit. I manifest the more glorious ministry in the spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. So today we have been hearing the word peace a lot. In the story of Isaac and the wells, Isaac displayed peace and in the seventh attitude that Jesus taught us, which is, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. So what is peace, children? Yes, it is being calm, relaxed, not worrying, not arguing and fighting with one another. Because we trust in God. Children, we can be all these things only with the help of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 6, If your thinking is controlled by your sinful self, there is spiritual death. But if your thinking is controlled by the Spirit, there is life and peace. From this verse, we learn that if we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, and guide all our thoughts, we will have peace. Now can you tell me what or who is a peacemaker? Let me give you an example. Have you been on a bridge? Yes, I'm sure most of you have. It's fun, isn't it? But what does a bridge do? If a bridge is built over a river, it helps people on one side of the river get to the other side. Without that bridge, it would have been difficult or almost impossible to get to the other side. In the same way children, when people fight and argue with each other, their pride or anger against that person prevents them from becoming friends again. They may not speak to each other for a long time. 
or they may say hurtful things about them to others and just be mean and bitter about the people they are fighting with all the time. There is no peace between them and they become far from each other and more importantly they find it very difficult to become friends again even if they want to. So as peacemakers we should ask God to help us build a bridge of peace and friendship between people or groups who fight and are not at peace. But remember children, to do that, we ourselves must always try to live in peace and not fight with others. Romans 12, 18 says, do the best you can to live in peace with everyone. When you do your best to live in peace with everyone, you are a peacemaker. Children, can you tell me who can we look up to as the perfect peacemaker? Yes, it is God himself, Jesus Christ, the perfect peacemaker. You know children, after Adam and Eve rebelled against God by disobeying him, sin entered the world. Satan ruled the earth and through Satan entered hate, anger, jealousy, pride, confusion and all other kinds of evil. People slowly forgot God's goodness and they lived evil lives. They lived in sin, hating one another and practicing all kinds of evil. Children, when we sin, we become enemies of God. It means that we are at war with God and there is no peace. God knew from the beginning that no amount of us being good could save us from sin and separation from Him. So God sent His Son Jesus to bring peace and hope back into the world. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace and the perfect Lamb of God died on the cross for our sins so that we may have peace with God, others and also with ourselves. Just before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said to his disciples, I live you peace. It is my own peace I give you. I give you peace in a different way than the world does. So don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. From John 14 verse 27. So children, when we believe in Jesus and his finished work, on the cross, we will have peace. And we, as believers of Jesus, are called to share that peace with others as peacemakers in the name of Jesus. If we are to be peacemakers, we must ask the Holy Spirit to lead us. We must ask Him for wisdom on how to help solve the problems between people as we cannot do things successfully on our own. We must learn to think good of others even when we know their mistakes. Only when we understand their stories, see their hearts will be effective in building bridges between people. Children, how can we be the peacemakers that God wants us to be. So that is first is by following Jesus. Jesus is the best example to learn how to bring peace and get along with everyone. When we follow Jesus and make peace with everyone, we glorify his name. The way we live our lives in peace will reveal that we are children of God. So children, 
let's pray that we will be children who follow Jesus' example every day and live as children of God. Shall we close our eyes in prayer? Jesus, we thank you that you have set an example of how to live in peace and get along with everyone. Help us, Jesus, to follow your footsteps every day. You are Jehovah Shalom, God of peace. Help us, Lord, to live our life in peace with people around us so that we glorify your name. We want to reflect you, Jesus, every day in our life. Be with us, Lord, and lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. And second is by showing love. The greatest commandment that Jesus gave us is to love God with all our hearts, our soul and mind, and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. When we practice this commandment by loving God, showing mercy and kindness to others, we will always walk in peace. So let's pray now and ask God to fill us with his love and kindness so we will be able to give the same kind of love to others. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you love us unconditionally. Your love is unfailing. Your love sees no boundaries. Jesus, fill us, fill our heart to, too with the, uh, the same kind of love to love you with all our heart, mind and soul. And also to show your love, kindness and mercy to all around us unconditionally. Jesus, you help us to love others and walk in peace the same way you loved us. We surrender everything into your hands, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And the next is by sharing Jesus. As we share the truth of God's love to our friends and family, they will experience God in their lives too and be free from living in sin. They will be free from anger and hate and jealousy and they too will walk in love. When you share Jesus to others, you are a peacemaker and you will be called a son or a daughter of God. So children, shall we pray now and ask God to give us strength and courage to share Jesus with all around us. So children, why don't we think of a friend or a family member and pray that this person or this family receives Jesus into their lives and become a son or a daughter of God. So let's commit everything in prayer. Father, we thank you for revealing your truth to us and setting us free from sin and saving us as your word says, to go and preach the gospel. Lord, help us uh, with your strength and courage to share the truth, share Jesus with our friends and family who are yet to know about you, so that you too can, they too can experience, Lord, your, you and your presence, Lord, and in their lives and be free from living in sin. And they too, will feel the peace of God in their lives. They too will be called the son and daughter of God. Use each one of us, Lord, to touch lives around us. You lead us, Jesus. We surrender everything unto you. In Jesus' name, we all say, Amen.
hope you enjoyed today's online service and would love to hear from you. Tell us what you think. Write your comments in the live chat or send an email to kidsonline at abcwo.org. Also, don't forget to visit us online at abcwo.org slash kidsonline. We have fun activities and challenges for you to do. Remember, if you do a good work and send it to us, we may include it in our upcoming online services. So make sure to go to apcwo.org slash kids online and do one or more of those activities. Would love to meet with you and pray with you immediately after the service. You can join us on Zoom for a quick catch up using the Zoom login ID and password provided on the screen. Before we close, is anyone's birthday coming up this week? Why don't you type in your name, birth date, and your age in the live chat so we as a team can wish you and pray for you. Have you always had questions about the Bible? about Jesus or how to live for Jesus and didn't know who to ask. Why don't you email your questions to us and we'll do our best to answer them in an upcoming online service. The email to write to is kidsonline at abcwo.org. We look forward to hearing from Let's pray before we close. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you God for this day Lord. Thank you so much for teaching us about your word Heavenly Father. Thank you so much Lord for, for this time together and time in your presence and in your word. Lord, I just ask this in Jesus name that you would teach each and every one of us Lord to pursue peace and to be peacemakers. Help us, Heavenly Father, to glorify you, Lord Jesus, by making peace with others. Lord, I also pray for everyone who is celebrating their birthday this week. And I ask, Lord, that you would pour out your love and shower them with your blessings and your love and your goodness. Thank you so much, Father. We ask all this in, in, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Bye-bye. See you on Zoom. Bye children. See you on Zoom. Bye everyone. We will see you next Sunday. Bye everyone. See you all immediately after the service on Zoom.